Hello everybody, I am Owen here with Three Brothers Entertainment. On my right, we've got Harrison, and on my left, we've got Charlie. Uh, we look a bit different right now because we are playing a completely different version of the game. Right now, uh, we are going to show you the top 10 tips and tricks that we recommend people use when they're starting out in Minecraft, or just really doing anything in Minecraft if you're a beginner. So these are the stuff that we thought are integral to the new Minecrafter experience. Um, we're gonna get started walking out to the very first tip and trick. <laughs> the very first tip we have isn't actually in the Minecraft world. Nope, this is when you set up your game. So real quick, I'm just gonna go into settings to show you what this looks like. Obviously, when you're starting a world, it's gonna look a bit different compared to this. What you need to know, though, is that what's on the right of my screen here, the stuff I'm scrolling through, is some of the stuff that you're gonna wanna keep in mind and think about changing when you start your game. Obviously, we've got the world name. Give it a unique name that describes what it is so it's really easy to find it and show it to someone. Default game mode, you've got survival or creative when you're starting your world out, but when you're in the world, you can go to settings and click on adventure, which is basically survival but you can't break blocks uh difficulty this is really up to you hard is hard normal is pretty normal easy is easy and peaceful means there are no monsters um a starting map gives you a map and then you can use that to your advantage when you're starting out in a survival world or even a creative world and then the bonus chest is just a chest with some goodies in it player permission when joining from invite now this is a big one if you're hosting a world just with your friend or your brother or something you could do something along the lines of select member or select operator Really, member and operator are the ones that you're going to want to give people that you trust. Operator allows them to use the command line. Member is the default. They can do everything just except for um, use commands. World type. Now, you have two options, and I can't and you can't change it when you're in the world. So once the world is created, it's set in stone, right? If you select flat, flat looks like this. I'm pretty sure you guys know what a flat world looks like. So it's a lot like a blank canvas. The other option is infinite, which is just your normal Minecraft world. You've got hills and valleys and biomes and stuff. Seed, um, if you click on this little arrow right here next to where it says seed, uh -oh. if you click on that, it gives you a, a list of different seed options that are preset. So if you don't want to just generate a random world. Simulation distance, I recommend keeping this somewhere around like six to eight chunks. Of course, it depends on the device you're using. If you're using a more powerful device, you can go up to this higher ones. It's just not really recommended for um, like a less powerful device. Friendly fire, they're kind of self-explanatory. Usually they look like this when you first create a world, but I've just turned on show coordinates and immediate respawn, just in case. Um, a lot of these, this is just up to you once again. Respawn radius, I don't usually mess with that one. Um, uh, if you're just creating like a world for fun, don't really mess with these. These are more for people modding and programming Minecraft. Um, cheats, so automatically cheats are turned off, so you can't activate them, but if you do, then you can't get achievements. But cheats, it's pretty good if you're doing like a creative world. I usually have these enabled. These are, once again, pretty self-explanatory. I recommend putting keep inventory on if you are playing in a creative world. That was tip number one. We're gonna hand tip number two off to Charlie. Tip number two is how to protect your base. When it comes to protecting your base, you always want a wall or something around it to you know, prevent monsters or mobs, right? So here I have the survival tactic. I just made it this out of dirt and put the torches like every few blocks and you always want to have sla slabs, not slobs, at the top of your walls so that spiders can't crawl over. Spiders, while they can yeah. go up walls and stuff, even if you put a block here instead of a slab, they're still going to be able to go around that. So putting a slab there, it stops them from going up the wall and getting over the wall. So it's a pretty useful technique, like Charlie said. Oh, what I forgot to mention is you must be like, oh, what do the bushes do? So the bushes, they're they're called sweet berries, right? But they also, if you, when you're in survival, then you'll see I'm taking damage now from walking through these. You always want to have torches on your wall so that uh, like no creepers or zombies will spawn near your wall. Creative wall. So I made it out of stone. Down here, cobwebs, no matter what game mode you're in, they'll slow you down. These red blocks down here, they kind of look like lava, right? It'll take away half a heart, just like the sweetberry bushes. It takes a long time when you're in the cobwebs to get out of them. Damage dealt towards you, your hearts. Just so you know as well, these are not the only two ways you can build walls in Minecraft, obviously. You can edit these, yeah. or you can even create one out of completely different material. Yeah. These are just what we think are um, the best 
for beginners. So, Charlie, now on to tip number three, TNT and how to stay safe. There are four main creatures and things you want to stay away from. You always want to stay away from creepers, always skeletons, definitely zombies, and sometimes even other players. You've seen our Bed Wars videos. Of but course, there's still a ton cool. of other monsters for you to stay away from, but that's yeah. going to be covered in a later tip. I feel like bread is probably the best food to have on hand, because it's pretty easy to have with you, and baked potatoes are pretty good. And then there, you always want to have a sword. You don't have to have a netherite sword. And you should probably always have a shield whenever you can, because it helps you stay safe. And you always want to have armor on whenever you can, no matter what kind, like, even if it's leather armor, that's still great. If you're living near a lake, and a creeper comes and attacks you, you always want to run towards that lake. Or you want to put the creeper, the creeper in the in lake when it explodes because yeah. TNT doesn't really destroy blocks or do much damage when it's in water. You should always walk around with a water bucket that uh, you can keep all the TNT away. Tip number four, how to travel the other <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> folks. Yeah, I'm a genius, guys. So um, in Minecraft, there isn't just one dimension but if you really want to beat the game then there's two other dimensions that you're going to have to travel to in order to beat the game the first one the first one is the nether for the nether portal you can build it any size you want i think the minimum though it's two by three then to ignite it you just flint and steal this up. You can build this really big, or you can build it pretty tiny. Anyways, let's head into the nether. So you'll notice it looks a bit different. Um, there's a bunch of lava and stuff. The nether, this is a place that you want to be going midway through the game. You want to have a lot of good resources, actually. Yeah, the nether is pretty dangerous. And you might be thinking, well, why would anybody want to come down here if it's so dangerous? It, these guys will attack you if you're not wearing gold. You've got these things, which you should just stay away from at all costs. There are some resources that you can only find in the nether, like this block right here, Netherrack. One of the main reasons people go to the Nether is because they're looking for a Nether Fortress. Because that's where you go to get these things called Blaze Rods, which you then use to craft these Eyes of Ender. We highly recommend you do some exploring of the Nether. Yeah, so that's the Nether. It's really cool. We highly recommend that you check it out. Anyways, on to the next one. This is the End. And it's named pretty well because it is the End. In a normal Minecraft world, if you're playing in survival, you would need to use the Eye of Ender to locate an End Portal. You can't build one of these. The only thing you can do to make one is place the eyes of ender in the slots you fill them all in and then you just click right here and boom you've got a portal this is where the final boss battle is going to be right come as prepared as possible with the best resources and tools you have and then you're just gonna hop on in uh, then you turn around and you see you've got this weird floating island made out of this weird material you've never seen to take out the ender dragon you want to take out all of these crystal thingies at the tops of the pillars because they heal the dragon and once you've taken all of those out you can then start your attack on the dragon beds if you place down a bed in the nether if you try to sleep in it it will explode same thing in the end all right so when you kill the ender dragon it does this it drops a ton of xp creates this little portal right here and this is the ender dragon egg oh no Where'd it go? Now you have to find it because it teleports away if you just try to break it like that. So that doesn't work. Instead, you need to use a piston or you could break the block that's underneath it, right? And then you just place a torch down there. You break the block that the egg is over. It falls. It breaks on the torch. Anyways, now on to tip number five, mobs brought to you by Harrison. Boom. Mobs are not that fun to go against. Skeletons, they have um, bone arrows to shoot you. Ravagers, they can go really fast and pillagers right on them. Have ravagers crossbow. are very dangerous, by the way. You want to yeah. stay away from these. Pillagers, yeah. you'll find usually in their pillager tower. Um, and they go and they raid the villages and they do a bunch of damage. So they're not very awesome. They're a bit like Vikings, but worse. Yeah, and pillagers are like um, villagers, cousins, but evil. Zombie villagers and... They are like zombies, but just looking like villagers. They are zombified villagers. So if a zombie yeah. uh, gets to a villager, they have a chance they, of turning them into a yeah. zombie villager. Not nice. They totally blow the up. They can destroy your um, de destroy your build. Yes. And also, Mojang were trying to make a pig. This is what it looked like. There's something pretty cool. If a creeper gets struck by lightning, then it will turn into a charged creeper, which makes it like... 10 times more dangerous or something and it's got like this blue glow around it it's super duper rare it's and if and by all... the way if you get near enough a creeper in survival it will explode so this is actually tip six and tip seven kind of combined um this is command blocks and the command line so this is 
where people usually start to fall asleep because I think it's too technical. But actually, it's not. If I press this, oh, I've got a netherite sword. And sword. Here's, here's how command blocks work. Basically, command blocks are uh, like instructions that you give the game that sit in a block that you can activate whenever you want. For our purposes, we just use them usually to change the weather or spawn in like swords Lightning. and stuff. It's not in the creative menu. You have to press the slash key or if you're playing on Minecraft Pocket Edition or if you're on the Switch or whatever, you go to this where you go to this menu where you usually do chat. You type in this slash, right? And then you do give. And then you press the space bar, at sign, and then you can set this to whoever. I'm just gonna set it, I'm gonna do at S, cause that means like self. So I'm slash giving something to myself, right? And now I have to tell the game what it is I'm gonna give myself. Right now, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna do command, C-O-M-M-A-N-D, and then underscore block. Then you just click this sign right here, and then you'll see on the left it says gave command block times one to crack an attack in 17. There's a command block right there. If you wanna add something into a command block, right click on it. Right here in this hover note, this is basically the name of the command block. So we can set this to epic command. And then you'll see when we hover our mouse over it or our cursor or this little thing in the center, it says epic command. Now command input. Let's say we wanna change the weather, right? We would do slash weather. Right? And then let's say we wanted it to be clear, right? So that line would be slash weather clear. If you want to place something on a command block or really anything where if you have to click on it and then it opens something like a crafting table, you have to crouch and then you can place the button on it. So it's raining. If we press the button, it looks like it's working. It's not raining for me, but like, It's yeah, still raining for me, really but it, it works. So but command blocks are really cool. You could do a ton of really awesome stuff with them. If you put something in a command block, you can also put it in the command line. Since I kind of know who's watching this video right now, they're, they're probably wondering, well, I know I can fly, right, in creative mode. I know that if I double tap certain buttons, I can sprint. But what if I want to go faster? Well, there are a few ways you can do that, and I'm, here's where I'm going to show you them. Uh, go into your inventory real quick. Go to the search bar and type in SWIFT. So you'll see it comes up with these potion of swiftnesses. I'm gonna go for speed two. That's this one, potion of swiftness. And at the bottom it says plus 40% speed. Drink it and you'll notice your screen kind of stretches out and you'll see on the right side of my screen there's this little like leather boot icon. Well, that means my speed has just increased by 40%. You know, if you want to make like a quick transportation method, then you could use minecarts or you could do this. This is a very long packed ice highway. You put down a bunch of packed ice. You put down a boat. And there are a bunch of other complicated ways you could do this. And then go forwards. And you'll notice I am going very, very fast. So this is a really cool way if you've got your builds really far distances uh, from each other. Of course, you should know if you do end up crashing, let's say like right here, if you do hit a block, uh, that will cancel out all of your speed. This is a great way to build um, really good highways across your worlds. Tip number nine, how to enchant things and how to use potions. Just one way to enchant stuff. So you can always go into your enchantment table. So let's say you've got an ax, right? By what if, But what if I want to make it better? What if I want to give it magical ability? Charlie, so why don't we do uh, sharpness? Are... Can you give my sword sharpness and use it as an example? Sure. Great. Take my sword, Wait. back up. If you're gonna use an, encha an enchanted book, you're gonna you're gonna want to use um, an anvil, right? So he's gonna he's gonna oh, put God, my sword. sword. It's, he's it's gonna like put my sword in one of the small. slots. He's gonna put the enchanting book in the other slot, and then this is gonna light up, and it's gonna give me my enchanted netherite sword. That's how you enchant right. and name things. Now, Charlie, teach them what an enchanting table does. So an enchanting table, you it's like the the table with the book on it, right? You put your <laughs> weapon or whatever you're gonna enchant on the enchantment table. That is lapis that, lazuli. It's pretty useless. It looks like diamonds when you mine it in a cave, but it's not. The only use it has that I know of in the game is to make dyes and also enchant things. So if I put my sword in this slot, my lapis in this slot, I get three different effects that I can put on my sword. Now these numbers right here, these numbers basically just say uh, how much experience points that's gonna cost. I can put it right there. Now I've got sharpness four and knockback two on one sword. The more bookcases you put around your enchanting table, uh, the better the enchant will be. Moving on to our final tip, 
building basics. So we're gonna start out with Charlie's house right here. Charlie, why don't you show him what you have oh, built? Oh, uh, um, you, you'll see in the front yard, I have like a bunch of random blocks, right? All of the blocks that you're gonna use together and see if they look good, you should place down to see if they go well together. So you don't want an, a bright neon green block or something like that. This house, I just built it like a normal, a normal villager house. It has the bed candles usually there will be a torch instead of a candle i just put candles in this is like a this is a really good beginner house actually uh yeah. if you're building a beginner house this is one that both charlie and myself recommend um even though i was kind of doubting it earlier like, when you were building it but i think it looks really nice now that you furnished yeah. it um but this is what we recommend is like a good starter house so, so we'll you show you so this is more through. of a creative mode house uh, it's definitely not finished. Um, this is 145 Shoutout Street. Uh, but this is one of the many, many different house options that you can build in Minecraft. There's no, remember, there's no set rules. You make your own rules and your own house. I this is just what I thought would be cool if you're starting out in creative mode. That's it for the building tips. Now, wait, wait, wait. Before you go anywhere, before you leave or click off this video, we're not done yet. We've still got some very cool stuff to show you. Now, this house was actually kind of ironically... The first thing that we built when um, we created this tips and tricks video, and I just want to yeah. kind of go over what it is, um, some of the building techniques I used, Harrison and Charlie and I used for it, because uh, I think it looks really cool. You and Harrison. Yeah, you helped. You added in all the animals and all that stuff. So we've got this garden around the house I done by Harrison, the, uh, mostly. I did some house. of the flower gardens. I did some of the and grasses I did the and stuff. Arch. He also did, did the, arch, the arch, which looks pretty good. Whenever you're building a yard, you always want to have, like, a, some sort of greenery, because if it's just, like... If it's just plain grass, grass dirt, and then it hits your house, like, if it's just grass, 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 house, that doesn't look too good. So you want to kind of spruce it up a little bit. See what I did there? Trees, so spruce. In okay, so some of the other cool stuff, just on the exterior of the house first off, you might have noticed this. This is the chimney, and we used cobwebs for a really long time in Minecraft. Um to add in like effects effect. of smoke coming out of the chimney, right? Until of course they added campfires, which actually produced smoke. But I just thought this was a really cool kind of homage and it looks a bit different and adds uh, some layers. This is the shout out house. Now we have a really cool um, shout out plan for today. And this is something we haven't done before. All right, so here we are, the very first ever shout out on Three Brothers Entertainment channel. This goes to our um, good friends, our really good friends, um, way out on the other side of the country. Who is it? It's Jack and Sam. Jack and Sam, you guys, um, we've heard great things. You guys have really, I watched, An you're awesome really the only viewers. people that have watched all of our Minecraft videos, or so I've been told. So anyways, uh, that's gonna be it for today. If you guys Jack need any, if you guys uh, have any questions on tips and tricks, uh, put them in the comments. We'll be glad to answer them. Um, I think uh, we'll see you in the, our next tips and tricks or just any Minecraft or and game video.